Hey everybody, what is going on? My name is Raven and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about a Lindsay Haugen. Now for those of you who do not know who she is, she is in the TV show on Netflix of I, I Am A Killer is what it's called. It's a really awesome show. I love watching it. It's really informative. And I love that they actually talk to everyone in, involved in the case, whether it be victims' families, the police investigating, the murderers themselves. So this is where I kind of found out about her. Now I'm kind of going to put a little bit of my own spin on it. So let's get into it. So Lindsay met a man named Robert. Okay. Robert Mast is his name. And... You know, what she said was they kind of met up at, you know, at their party. He had just got out of rehab, which his mom and stepdad did prove that he was actually in rehab. Um, so they met. He said, you know, I can't stay because, you know, he had been traveling a lot. He, and his mom and stepdad also proved that, too, that he travels a lot because he was a free spirit and just wanted to go and do pretty much whatever he wanted and not worry about anything so they met at the party and then she said you know why don't you just stay with me and he said no I, I can't I have to go I can't stay in one place for too long so she said well what if I went with you and she said you know I'll drive you wherever you want to go I will take you so they drove okay so this is where it gets interesting. So they actually ended up in Montana, okay, in Billings, Montana. So they stopped at a Walmart parking lot. And I guess he had kept telling her throughout the trip and all that that I want to die. I don't want to be here anymore. I, I'm not happy. I just wish I could die. And she also said that, you know, he would do the action with his fingers to his head, things like that. I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about. So that is what she claims. Okay. Now, also, we do need to keep in mind that her past relationship, she has been physically abused. Where, you know, she would be hit. She was choked out. You know, all of this by her ex, her ex-fiance. And she said... You know, the, during the time that he was choking her, like, if you're going to do this, just kill me. And I don't want to wake up from this. I don't want to go through this anymore. So she blacked out. You know, I guess he came, she came to a few hours after that. And, you know, he was arrested. She never saw him again. So that's kind of like a little bit of her backstory. She has been abused. And she met him through the army. She's an army veteran, which, cool. Anyway, so fast forwarding to the crime itself. So apparently, you know, he said during, you know, at Walmart, they'd been drinking, things like that. And he said, you know, I really just want to die. Now, again, this is her words. Take it if uh, as a grain of salt. Take it as a truth if you feel. Now, I do feel she was telling somewhat the truth the way she was explaining things. But then again, she could have been lying. Who knows? Okay, so she he kept saying this to her and she said, well, if you really want to die, you know, I can help you so that, you know, it doesn't hurt all these things, right? And he said, okay, go ahead, you know. So what ended up happening was she ended up, you know, putting her arms around his neck and at first it wasn't doing anything, so then she put her one arm behind, as you can kind of tell how this is going. And she applied as much pressure as she could. Now, she has some muscle tone to her. So it's not like she's weak or anything like that. She used to be in the army, so she has muscle, okay? So she, what she also said, as of this point, is that she waited until, you know, he was twitching a bit. He was foaming at the mouth. So, she also said that when she would take her arms away from, like, his nose and mouth after he apparently blacked out, he would take his, her hand and put it back over to finish the job. And apparently it happened a few times. Now, the detective investigating this case said that if you're passed out, you're not going to be moving your hands, which is a fair point. So, I don't think that part of this is true. I don't think that, you know, 
he put her hands back over his nose and mouth because apparently when he passed out, she covered his nose and mouth with her hands and proceeded to suffocate him that way. Um, at least that's how she explains it. That's what she says. So, that's... <laughs> I'm sorry, but I... I just don't know, you guys. I really don't know if it's true. I do not know if the way she's wording it is true. I do not know any of this. Okay. Now, the weird thing about this is, is that his mother and stepfather forgave her for murdering their, her son. Which I find to be very confused and interesting because she murdered him. She made him, you know, she strangled him. He suffocated, basically, as well. And you forgive her and you say, oh, we love you and all this. I I don't think I could do that. I understand forgiving to an extent. But I don't understand telling a murderer, someone that murdered your child, I love you. That just seems a whole new thing for me. Now, apparently the rest of the family has said that, you know, they are using his death for personal gain. And that's why they went on the show and things like that. Obviously, they're very upset. You know, his father, stepmother, all of them, they all feel that way. So, and everyone can feel differently about the loss of a loved one. I get it, you know. I mean, I've never lost someone to murder, thank God. But I've lost family members and when people talk a certain way... I may or may not agree. So I, I get not agreeing with the mom and stepdad on how they handled this whole thing. So I also read in, you know, one of her files that said that she felt like she deserved the punishment she got. So she got, you know, you know, so much, the 65 years in prison and she felt like she deserved it. Now, from what I have actually read, is that she is capable of parole at some point in the future. I do believe it's like the year 2038, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe even before that. I know she's up for parole at some point. At least I'm pretty sure she is. Because she's appealing, you know, her case and all that. Obviously. But I, I don't know. So what do you guys think? Let me know. Leave a like on the video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And you can see more videos like this. I also do some gaming videos as well. So you guys get a nice variety. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!